Hi there, I'm Lee Johnson from The Conscious Creative and welcome to this third video in Public Speaking Skills. In this video, I'd like to talk about structure and language, a few miscellaneous points, and then I'm going to set you a couple of tasks. Firstly, language. The language that we use can be a very important part of our presentation. For example, imagine someone coming onto stage and starting like this. Um, uh, hi, sorry everybody, um, I, I, I don't usually do this sort of thing, I haven't had a lot of time to prepare, but um, I'm, I'm going to try uh, and do my best to talk to you uh, uh, about this today. You see, that kind of language and apologising, saying words like try, really don't do you any favours. So starting, you might, for example, say, hi, say your name and then say, I'm here to or I will show you. Words like will, can, I am, for example, are much, much stronger than saying things like I'm going to try and, for example. In terms of structure, it's important to have a good start, a good middle and a good end as well. Now, this might seem really, really obvious, but it's great to have a structure so that you know where you're going. There are different ways you can start your speech. Perhaps you might start with a quote. For example, Albert Einstein said that no problem can be solved from the level of consciousness that created it. I'm here today to show you how to raise your consciousness level so perhaps you can solve the problems in your own life. That might be one thing you could use. You could pose a question, or it could be a simple, did you know? Did you know? There are 400 trillion cells at work in your body right now. So however you choose to start your speech, then through the middle section, you want to start building on those arguments, giving examples, perhaps looking at the different positions, different sides of the argument, and just making yourself clear and having a desire to explain. This is an important thing for me. If, if you really have that desire to share your knowledge, to explain what it is you know, or what you've found out, or what you're trying to find out, then it helps to bring your audience on that journey with you. Now, when you're concluding, when you're wrapping up what you're saying, again, you could leave your audience with a question. So what are you going to do about it? So what change are you going to make in your life? Or it could be, a call to action. You could be giving people something that they can do to make a change. If you're nervous about remembering what it is that you're going to say, certainly if you have quite a long opportunity to speak, then maybe you want to use some notes. Now, if you do, I would suggest that you learn a good introduction. So know what you're going to say from the beginning so that you're not relying on those notes from the first time that you start speaking up on stage. I'd also recommend that you just, like I've done here, use bullet points. So try to not have long sentences or large sections where you'll be reading for a long time. If there is a quote that you're, you're going to read, and just know that it's okay to hold your notes up quite high, because that way we're not losing too much eye contact with our audience. If we're trying to hide them and we're keeping them either out of camera shot or if we are just keeping them low because we think that looks good on a stage, then you've actually got to look down quite far and it's harder to read when they're further away. And also, we're losing that eye contact far more than if they're up here. Can you see the difference? But notes can be an integral part of presentations, whether it's cue cards, so don't feel bad about using them. Perhaps as you take more of your public speaking opportunities, you'll have the opportunity to use a microphone more often. Now, I've seen a lot of bad mic technique in my career, so I just want to give you a few pointers to help you out. Now, what I always start by doing when I'm using a handheld microphone similar to this is to gently plant my elbow into the side of my body here and then have the microphone just here, so kind of around the area of the chin and this is just about just over a hand's width from my chin to the microphone itself. 
Now this way, with my arm just gently planted into my side, if I'm moving to talk around to people like this, I've still got my other hand free to gesticulate with, but the microphone isn't waving around. All too many times I've seen people talking and gesticulating with both hands or having this one in the pocket and using this one <laughs> to point around. And of course, you're, going to, you're not going to be heard if you're moving the microphone away from your mouth. So not to bury your mouth right into it either, not to have it too far away down here, but just gently here. So if you have your elbow planted, you'll be just about in the perfect place. If you're making videos for the internet and to share with other people, then I'd like to talk a little bit about framing to help you out. As you can see here, I'm nice and central uh, in the middle of this picture. There's a bit of space between my head and the top, and you can see my torso, and you can see my hands so that I can gesticulate a little bit. I'm able to do this because I have a separate microphone just here. But now, if you are in a frame like so, and you wanted to put text at the side of the screen, then just moving aside like so is fine, and moving this way. And we talked in other videos about not moving around too much. Now, on a camera, this is heightened even more. So if you do start moving around and you have a little nervous tick, or if you start bouncing or moving around like this, it's shown in, in far greater detail than if we're up on a stage, for example. So again, important to make sure that you're planted and all your natural movement just comes from the waist upwards. Regarding sound, if you don't have a separate microphone like I do just here, and you're using the one that's on board the phone or the camera that you're using, then you want to get as close to that device as you possibly can. So just to give you an example with my camera here, so I'm just stepping out of the lights. So if I come just about here, there we go. It doesn't matter if you cut off your head a little bit. So you don't want to be too close, okay? But just about here, just so we're getting the full face in. And now you're just hearing the sound off of the camera. So you can hear, it's actually pretty good quality. But then if I stand back and I keep using the sound from that camera, suddenly it's a little more distant. And you can spend so much time making a great video but then if the sound isn't very good, it can really waste a whole video. What I'd like to do now is set you a task to help find out what your tells are. Now by tells, I mean little words or mannerisms that you overuse and don't necessarily help you get your message across. For example, you might start every sentence by saying, so, or okay, or now. Or the worst possible one, um, <laughs> maybe there's something that you always do with your hand, or maybe you keep turning your head to the side and doing this. I once worked with somebody that just kept shrugging their shoulders all the time. And they're things that don't necessarily help us. So in a moment, I want you to film yourself and introduce yourself, say three things about yourself, and they could be anything. They could be your favourite hobby, um, your friends, something about your pets or family, for example. And then end on a closing statement. Before you do this, there's a few things that I want to let you know. Now, cameras have this strange quality of actually taking our energy away a little bit. What I mean by that is, if you just speak as you normally do on a camera, it can tend to look a little bit flat. For example, if I was to say, Hi, my name's Lee Johnson. It's not quite as engaging and dynamic as if I were to say, hello, my name's Lee Johnson. So what we try to do is while still being ourselves and not being over the top, is just give a little bit more energy to what we're saying. And it's a great opportunity to film yourself and look at this back to see if you're hitting the right sort of mark. Perhaps, as with many people, you don't like the sound of your own voice. Now this is because when we hear our voice played back, we don't hear it the same as we actually hear it in our own heads. Now the reason for this is to do with the resonance of the jaw, and we talked a little bit about this in the first video. So as we speak, and our jaw resonates, of course the jaw meets up here at the skull, and of course that's right by the ears. 
So as well as hearing our voice outwardly through the ears, we're also hearing it through the jaw. So we never quite hear how we truly sound. But we just have to trust that everyone else has been okay with our voice for ages. And it's just something we have to get used to. And listening to yourself back and watching yourself on video is a great way to do that too. So have a go with this and see how you get on. The last and possibly the most important piece of advice that I want to leave you with is to be authentic. Be authentically yourself. Often if we've seen other people speaking and, and we think that they're really good, we can try to imitate and try to emulate them. But the reason that they're very good at speaking is because they're being authentically themselves ultimately. Now in, in practice at home, all of the tips and tools that I've given you are fantastic to help you with your technique. But ultimately, for me, it comes down to being authentically yourself that really helps you connect with an audience and ultimately helps you to get your message across. When you're being truly authentic, it helps with a lot of other things as well. For example, if you're having eye contact with members of your audience and perhaps they don't look that engaged with what you're saying, sometimes it can make us feel a little bit nervous and it can knock us out of our flow a little bit. But I have had a few experiences of this where I'm speaking or running a workshop and there's one person that just looks like they're really not engaged, not interested at all. Maybe just through folded arms, body language, head down. But then on these occasions, that's often been the person that comes to me afterwards and said, that was fantastic, I really enjoyed that. You know, we all look very, very different when we're focusing, when we're really listening. So what you think about what the audience might be thinking may not be true. And the more authentic and comfortable you are in yourself, the less things like that will bother you as well. Also, when you're being more naturally yourself, you might find that if little things go wrong here and there, then you can take them with a little bit more humour and be more relaxed. Also, for example, if the audience laugh at something uh, and you didn't quite plan for that, then you can just allow that as well without trying to talk over their laughter or trying to push on through. When you're more authentic, when you're more natural, you're naturally more responsive as well to your audience. And they're responding to you and you want to naturally respond back to them as well. There's one final task that I'd like to set you to help you practice. And it's to record yourself giving a one minute pitch. So I want you to introduce yourself and say the name of your company if you have a company as well. And to basically say what you do your mission statement almost for your company and then just to have a nice clean ending. Film yourself doing that and see if you can incorporate everything that I've talked about on these three videos. Finally I just want to say thank you so much for watching this public speaking skills course and if you do want to get in touch and you have any questions my email address is on the screen. But for now take care.